Blue Lake was part of it, uh, but it became the central part of the uh, drama, if you will, uh, because of one thing that happened, and that was the message was ready to be written. It started in February, and by the end of June, it was ready to go, and it was going to be put out, as messages often were in those days, as a release to the press. It's a statement by the president's message, special message on Indian affairs. So I am carrying, you know, I don't know, 200 of these things down to the White House press office, and you go through from the first floor of the White House to the press office is kind of an incline. Well, I look out, look up, and there is racing towards me from the Rose Garden a fellow named Kim Ballou, who was uh, the President Nixon's head of, of Senate relations. He was the White House person. And he comes racing in, and he tackles me. I mean, literally knocks me to the ground. All the papers go flying in the air. And I just kind of looked at him, and I said, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And he graciously picked me up. But after he picked me up, I said, what is wrong with you? And he said, that message, that Indian message, cannot and will not be released to the press or to anybody. And I said, why not? He said, because Senator Clinton Anderson opposes the return of Blue Lake to the Taos Pueblo people, and he is threatening to vote against the anti-ballistic missile treaty if the president continues his support of this legislation. So John Ehrlichman and Ken Ballou and I went down, and I was not, I was too junior a staff member to be invited into the Oval Office, so I was not invited in, I stood in the ante room. And John and Ken come in there, and they're in there for just ever, at least I thought so forever. And as they leave, as the door opens from the Oval Office, and I caught the president's eye, and I could have sworn he winked at me. And Richard Nixon didn't wink at people, but I thought, he winked at me. And the door closed, and I said, okay, what happened? And John had this big grin on his face, and Ken looked like a Mack truck had run over him. And John said, well, the president said that he's going to continue his support for Blue Lake. He doesn't care what Clinton Anderson says. And if Clinton Anderson wants to vote against the ABM treaty, let him go do that, and let him go for a little word himself. And I said, okay. And then John said, and in addition to that, uh, the president has decided that we will have the Taos Pueblo people in to receive his Indian message. And he said, I looked at the calendar, July 8th, I think works. So we're gonna have them in and they will be representative of the Native American people. So that is how the Taos Pueblo Indians and Blue Lake came such so center stage. There's something very special and significant about that because the cabinet room is almost always reserved for meetings of with the president of the cabinet, uh, of governors, of congressional leaders, and of heads of state. It is very rare for another group to be greeted in that room. They usually greet it in the Roosevelt Room and have a meeting. So for the president to hold it in the cabinet room uh, was doing two things. He, number one, was recognizing uh, sovereignty, sovereignty of, the, of the, the Indian tribe. And secondly, he was showing his utmost respect. And I think that is very, very important. It was pretty much the history of the Senate that if a piece of legislation was rejected by a committee, it never saw the light of day. And so this was the first time, I don't know if forever, but the first time in a very long time that a piece of legislation coming out of a committee, in this case, the Senate Interior Committee, Scoop Jackson's committee, was and rejected by that committee, was approved by the floor, that the floor, the Senate, the full Senate overturned that committee. And that was done by President Richard Nixon, Senator Fred Harris, and LaDonna Harris. And what a strange, can you think of a more strange trio, but a more effective trio? I mean, it was just quite smashing. And they had helping them Ted Kennedy. Uh, and two, the two lead Republican senators were Bob Griffin from Michigan and Mac Mathias from Maryland, who just felt it was the right thing to do. And they built, of course, on what had happened in the House, where Congressman Haley from Florida Again, you know, not a big land base for Native Americans. Congressman Haley carried it and got it passed along with Man Lu Manny Lujan, Manuel Lujan, who was the Congress Republican congressman from here. So again, Democrat and Republican. Uh, but on the floor, it was just fascinating. The, uh, till the very last moment, we really didn't know how the vote was going to go. And the key was Barry Goldwater, the Republican from Arizona. And everybody viewed him as Mr. Indian, even more Mr. Indian rights or Mr. Indian specialty, more so than they even did Scoop Jackson. So everybody was waiting to see what he would say. And he wouldn't, every time we tried to talk to him, he said, you're just going to have to wait. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. Leave me alone. Go away, young lady. Don't bother me. At any rate, uh, so Fred Harris was making um, the closing speech just before the vote. And we still don't know what Barry Goldwater was going to do. And then all of a sudden, Barry Goldwater stood up and he said, um, I would like to make a statement. And we all went like this, my goodness gracious. And what he said in very measured tones was that after thinking about it long and hard, 
he decided that the Taos Pueblo people deserved to have their land back. That it was a matter of treaty rights, it was a matter of basic equity, and it was a matter of religious freedom. And then he said, almost under his breath, then maybe we'd be better off if we just turned the whole state back over to them. <laughs> and people say he never said that, but I could have sworn I heard him say that. At any rate, the vote then, immediately they started voting, and the vote turned out to be 70 to 12. Well, we thought it was going to be, you know, 52 to 48 or something. And in the gallery uh, was the cacique, uh, the governor of the, of the Pueblo, uh, the tribal secretary, Paul Bonal, uh, and one or two other of the tribal councils, men, LaDonna Harris, Susie Poole, who had funded the effort, Jerry Strauss, who had been the lawyer, Brad Patterson, who had been my colleague in the White House, and myself. And in the, in the gallery of the Senate, you're supposed to sit and be quiet. You're not supposed to talk, you're not supposed to uh, clap, you're not supposed to chew gum, you're supposed to just sit there and be quiet. And when the vote finished and the person, the enrollee, announced the vote, 70 to 12, the cacique just stood up and he had two canes, one that had been given to him by President Link, Abraham Lincoln and one that had been given to him in 1970 by President Nixon. And the cacique stood up and held these two canes in the air. And everyone, the whole, everybody in the gallery stood up and applauded. All the senators who were standing down on the floor looked up and they started to applaud. And it was the most astounding moment I've ever seen. I've never seen that again. Uh, it was magical. It was absolutely magical. Uh, so I think those are the ones that, that really stick in my mind. The signing ceremony on December 15th was very moving and very lovely. And the Kasiki gave a beautiful prayer, which Paul Bernal translated. And the Kasiki gave a, a summary of why the Blue Lake was so important. And uh, Paul um, translated. And it was uh, Christmas time, so the East Room was fully decorated in, in uh, all its Christmas decorations. It just had a beautiful, mystical, almost vision for it. And then the president um, signed the bill, and then he made some just really wonderful off-the-cuff remarks afterwards about how this was probably one of the most important things he had ever done. I knew that the ceremony had gone on very long, and he had another event. And as a young White House staffer, you don't usually they had to spend a lot of time with the president, but he turned around and he looked at me and said, walk with me to my car, to the motorcade. So I was walking with him and I said, you know, Mr. President, I'm, you know, I know the ceremony ran long and I'm sorry and I know you have two other events. He was going to the Department of Housing and Urban Development to talk to their employees and then to the Commerce Department to issue economic statistics. And he turned around and looked at me, just turned around and looked at me and put his arm on my shoulder and said, Bobby, he said, this was the most, one of the most wonderful events I have ever participated in. What we did here today was so right and so important, and I'm so proud of what we did, and I only wish it could have gone on longer.